Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Previously on My Restaurant in India, Sarah discovered that training her new kitchen team might be more challenging than she first thought. Everyone speaks English, right? You speak English? You speak English? Not at all. Not at all. Oh my god, how am I gonna get through this? A thousand litres of water has just fallen onto our generator. We are going to be open in six days and I haven't got a cold room. I haven't got water. I haven't got electricity. But amongst the chaos, Sarah's determination to find fresh local produce finally started to pay off. And all of a sudden we're shipped onto a boat and going to catch our own fish. It's absolutely delicious. Finally have a name. And just when it seemed like things were moving in the right direction, India's unpredictable working conditions continued to set Sarah back. One amazing thing happens and one bad thing happens. So it's like forward back, forward back. <laughs> Everything's gone off. 20,000 rupees, all gone. We've run out of money. We've got to open. And after a long and challenging five weeks in Goa, a very special visitor flew in for an emotional reunion. Delamere. Sarah's son Phoenix is half Indian, so Sarah wants to take this opportunity to expose him to some of the rich Indian culture and tradition. This morning, they will participate in a puja ceremony to help launch Antares. We're just about to make an offering to, to Hindu gods Ganesh and Lakshmi, and hopefully this can give us the good kickstart and luck that we need to have a successful year. taken Phoenix to the temple a couple of times and he's just very intrigued by it all and yeah, I think he's a little spiritual baby. <laughs> Now you've prayed for the official launch, it's happened. <laughs> yeah. Hinduism says it's a way of life, it's not yeah. a religion. And it's probably the first restaurant that you'll see where the gods have blessed it before. <laughs> and gods have said it's ready to do business. <laughs> okay. So now we better hurry. Yeah. <laughs> now we need to get yeah. started. <laughs> yeah, we don't have things like that in Australia. I think we just go and have a beer, don't we, to launch something. <laughs> it's very nice. The new water tank arrives and the builders set about installing it. Progress has been slow, so Sarah can't afford any further setbacks as she tries to ready the team for the restaurant launch in four days. <laughs> Meanwhile, a delivery truck arrives hauling a massive load. Quick hurry, it's all starting to come out now. So today is a pretty hectic day. Our trucks arrived with all of our goodies from Delhi. If Actually from across the country. Yeah, across the country. <laughs> all over. They didn't so do much it. cool stuff. Oh, no, it's amazing. <laughs> You've done so well. Sarah has been anxiously awaiting this equipment in stock. Its arrival Five, means she can start preparing six. Antares as a working restaurant. Yeah. That's the reception one, yeah. Ooh, our jute rugs. These are all our wooden bowls. These are our pizza platters. Oh my God, so cool. <laughs> but with all the excitement comes a lot of hard work. Sarah and her staff now have to unpack and set up everything needed for a restaurant that seats over 400 people. Two gigabytes of pictures <laughs> as re references. Oh, and can you get this? It's from Japan. Can you get this? It's from Dubai. Can you, can you make this? It's from this island in India. She's a very expensive partner. 
She makes you build a restaurant with the best specs, uh, custom make a bunch of stuff, and, and I'm broke. I mean, this better work. There is no other option, because we've really put in a bunch of money in this. So she's uh, world class and she's expensive. I'm so proud of Sarah. This is absolutely amazing to build this three-story, 100-foot building and every decor that's in here. It's everything she imagined. All of us are going up and down like a big roller coaster in our emotions. Crazy, so much stuff. <laughs> so many good things. Now it feels like, yeah, it's getting close and I feel like we can probably do this. <laughs> you can cry. <laughs> Why do you want to cry? Oh, I want to cry because I'm so happy. It's so exciting. It is. <laughs> Sunday, the doors open for guests to come in and we open for business. So the whole energy today is to try and get the restaurant ready with the look and feel of a proper restaurant. And part of that is cleaning up this massive hill. <laughs> so there'll be a lot of beer and shouting today. Although there is a lot to get through, Sarah leaves the remainder of the unpacking to her staff so she can spend some time with her son. Phoenix is only in India for five days, and today he's been promised a visit to the local water park. <laughs> I'm about to accomplish the second biggest thing of my life after having my son, and that's creating my own restaurant, and I'm doing it for him. My whole life is about trying to find a balance, being a working mum and trying to support Phoenix and give him a good future. He's everything to me, so, yeah, I always want him here, and it can be hard because I want to spend the time with Phoenix and help him grow and learn and teach him things, and at the same time, I need to be in the restaurant and making sure everything's moving quickly and that I can open it up in time. So, yeah, it's massive tension between the two things that I love the most, my restaurant and Phoenix. Phoenix has an Indian father who lives in Melbourne, so the little guy will be splitting his time between Goa and Melbourne over the next few months. After leaving the restaurant early yesterday, little was accomplished with the unpacking and cleaning while Sarah was away. Can someone please take this rubbish away? What the hell? Seriously. You think that the next day you're gonna wake up and everything's gonna be fine, you know? We had a good day yesterday, we knocked a few things off the list and then you come back in and there's a, a few more to add to it. Boys, please help me take this away. That's so disgusting, it's not even funny. Every day, new things arise that have to be addressed. And my main passion of being in the kitchen and cooking and throwing myself into that has definitely been taken away. Oh, I guess it's kind of a constant battle. Sarah is managing more across this project than she ever expected. After getting the whole crew into cleaning duty, Sarah's next task is to appease her exasperated Aussie contingent. So I gave her the order because I'm supposed to go through the kitchen and now they're telling me I don't have any. With the restaurant launch looming, Nathan, who is managing the restaurant bar, is becoming increasingly frustrated with the ongoing problems in the supply of crucial stock and produce. Tensions are high and the cracks are starting to show as the team look to Sarah to provide a solution. Can we work out how to get this problem solved? I have the fear that the expat staff is just going to implode with the tension uh, and the responsibility of opening this in chaos, compressed timelines, and it has to happen. So there is, frankly, no leeway. Sarah calls a meeting in an attempt to form a better ordering process and put some clear lines of communication in place between the staff and the suppliers. Two days I haven't had any ingredients that we ordered last time. Through the kitchen. And I can get the three kilo of lemon. I don't have fridge and but I don't want to yeah. stock that, anything. But that was an order that so I was going to so this so is let, like me, let me finish. Yeah. Sure. Whatever you need, you know the freezer is over and everything is spoiled. The fridge downstairs so is still not everything working. Was so you have to look out whatever you want. You have to order one day before in the evening. The fridge is spoiled before. So whatever we, we ordered. Order no, but it's still not working. That's what the issue is. We have no refrigeration. So, 
No it's... one told me that we wouldn't get any stock for the bar. Yeah, that's no, cool. but it has been ordered. This, this is no, but what, I feel what's left, actually... I feel left out from the whole process because no one come and told me anything. No, okay. see, this is what happened. It's no one's fault, actually. It hasn't come in. That's so what happened. So it hasn't happened. come in, but so is no, there, no does anyone let us know that it hasn't we, come in? Or we've just... only just found out it hasn't come in. in the pop, on, on the bar. bar. Yeah. I gave it to Sarah and she yeah. sent it through. So it didn't come through. Yeah, yeah. 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 Maybe one person should talk at a time because we're all having different conversations and they're getting answered, actually. You should just call me. If you can't get through on an email, just call. The meeting quickly escalates and the language barriers don't make it any easier as Sarah struggles to assert herself with the suppliers. While Sarah has worked in restaurants before, she has no prior managerial experience and she's still learning how to lead her team. Jatinda, 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 it will all be on the same order, but it'll just go five kilos lemons, four kilos lemons. This has to be the process. This has to be the process from now on. So separate orders, separate orders. Everyone's just talking over each other and no one's discussing. It's really frustrating. Deciding they could do with some space from the restaurant, Sarah takes Sophie on a trip to the markets. Sarah and Sophie are on a mission to find fresh lobster. But while they are at it, they take the opportunity to knock some other bits and pieces off their long list. We need, should we check for a bell? We need to oh. get a bell quickly in here. Uh, yeah. Hi. Do you have a bell? Ding, ling, ling, ling. Ding, ding. Oh, this is a fun thing. Huh. Sarah wants to avoid the chefs shouting to the wait staff, so she's looking for a bell to notify the waiters when the orders are ready. Do you have a bell? Ding, ling. Oh. Never gonna find one. Oh, look at it, it's so beautiful here. Yeah. Sarah is surprised to discover a whole variety of fresh in-season produce at the markets, and it appears to be far better quality than what her suppliers are providing to the restaurant. It's frustrating because we're like walking along here, like it just looks magical. All of the produce is just so fresh. And we get in all our herbs are limp and gross. So I kind of just want to come here every morning, get my produce and go to the restaurant. If you have a 30 seater, that would be fine. But 250 to 400 people, 600 plus covers a day, that's not going to happen. <laughs> Imagine us carrying all this produce back. Uh, fish market? Fish market, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, look at the big sign, idiot. We're here too late. We're gonna come in the morning, it's annoying. It's almost the end of the day at the fish market and Sarah is disappointed to discover that all the lobster has been sold. But after seeing the quality of the clams on offer, Sarah is inspired to trial a new recipe. We're a bit late today and we've missed the fish. It's all sold out. So it's bad because I didn't get my lobster, but it's good because it means that the fish is super fresh and you know, you know, by lunchtime, everything's gone and sold. Oh, look. Ding, 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 bell. They say it's in a station. Oh, I have one. Oh. <laughs> Sarah and Sophie finally find a place that sells bells. They've discovered that there's no substitute for legwork at the market, and sometimes the only way to get things done is to get out there and do it yourself. Clams are one of the most readily available types of seafood in Goa. Fresh and good quality clams are easy to come by, so Sarah has decided to add a clam dish to the menu. Yeah, we still don't have any proper water here, so I'm using very expensive bottled water to try out this dish. You've got to do what you've got to do. So we're doing a linguine today with clams and fresh tomatoes, parsley, white wine sauce. And I'm going to monte a burst, a little bit of butter at the end, so it just makes it a little bit more rich. So if you cook onions slowly and on a low heat, they get really sweet. Don't have any lids.
minutes. <laughs> so it only takes like two to three minutes, so it's fine that I'm sitting here holding the lid. <laughs> <laughs> the Indian chefs are really good with any sort of flatbread or dough or pasta. They're just used to working with that kind of dough and they're awesome growing up making those kind of dishes since they were kids. She did my, my grandma's way. Oh yeah? Go yeah. for it. Yeah, it's ready. It's al dente. It's yeah. the way she tests. <laughs> Perfect, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you for coming with me today. That's all right, thank you. Here's your awesome. dinner. I come to markets every day. Dig in. Oh, so, lights, lights out. out. <laughs> We're eating just, in the dark now. You just made the ambience. Yeah, maybe we need candlelight, Sophie, a nice romantic dinner. <laughs> oh, that's really good. Okay. Yum. Am I eating all the clams? With a new water tank in place and a backup generator providing consistent power, the kitchen should be a hive of activity. But Sarah's time in the kitchen is once again delayed when the civil staff arrive unexpectedly to install the lights. Arindam is also starting to feel the pressure. He's been bumped up from sous chef to head chef, and today he'll need to show that he can take charge of the kitchen team. Given that she can't get into the kitchen, Sarah uses the opportunity to take Phoenix to the beach. The official electricity will be working hopefully by Monday, but whether it actually happens on Monday is a different story. So today kind of has worked out all right, that I feel like I can take the day off and enjoy it with Phoenix before you go home. You're going back to Australia tomorrow, to your other home. What do you think? You gonna miss me? Monkey, I'll miss you. With such tight deadlines, progress on the restaurant never ceases, with civil staff working late into the night. And they aren't the only ones. After a wasted day, Sarah and Arindam have no choice but to call the kitchen staff in for a late session. Looks like no one will be sleeping tonight. Hi, Pankaj. Hi, how are you? Good. You? No, I'm okay, thanks. So tonight, just because we're starting in the evening to prep, um, we'll just do some of the basic stuff. Today's been another one of those crazy days, and I mean, we finally have lighting in the kitchen, but in return, we are losing a whole nother day of prep. So we're just gonna have to get in the kitchen and work all night until we can get something done. Otherwise, it's just another waste of a full day. It's a slow start to the night as Sarah discovers she is still missing a lot of her produce. Used to changing plans last minute, she reworks the schedule so the kitchen team can keep working. It seems that Sarah is learning to adapt to the Indian way of things. You Language just, barriers continue to be a problem between Sarah and her team. So on top of Arindam's responsibilities as head chef, he's also taken on the arduous role as the kitchen's English and Hindi translator. Things are extremely different here to how things work in Australia. So getting used to just a completely different way of living and working over here. So, yeah, it's a challenge. So we'll get the potatoes peeled and cut into... Despite the, the day's kitchen. setbacks, everyone is happy to finally be in the kitchen I'm cooking. The Recipe cabbage. testing is in full flow, and Sarah and her team seem to be finding their groove. the fact that I'm trying to test a menu in an environment where we're just not ready to do that. And the season is nearly here, so this is what has to be done to get this restaurant up and running. And it's difficult. I should probably be taking a month to do all of this. Not everything needs to be perfect, but we just need to be able to serve great food, have a full restaurant, and that's the goal now. This morning, Arindam congratulates the team on how they worked last night. After a very steep learning curve and very little sleep, they are back in the kitchen and ready to continue menu trials. 
Thank you. Yes, Thank you. Best of luck for whole day. So today's going to be a big day of cooking. We um, have most of our produce for two big parts of the menu. So we slow cooked a lamb leg for 12 hours last night and marinated and we made some sauces as well last night. So today we can get cooking in the kitchen. So um, can we boil the potatoes? We can make the croquettes straight away and shred the lamb. Most of the staff are used to doing everything by hand. So Sarah is trying to introduce them to some of the new kitchen appliances. And now you start the blending process before you put in the oil. And so it's just slowly. Oh, that olive oil is so weird. I think that's rancid. That grape seed's not good. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> what is wrong with no? Don't anyone tell to taste it. It's that bad. <laughs> it's the mustard. It's not the mustard. It must be the oil. What's the date on it? No, it says 20. April 2015. It's out of date. <laughs> oh, this recipe is awesome. Even though Sarah can blame the rancid olive oil for her mayonnaise disaster, the staff seem to have lost confidence in her complicated appliances, and Arindam quickly returns to his old-fashioned ways, mixing the mayonnaise by hand. Today is about making the dishes and testing them, making sure they all taste good, and figuring out which oils to use, and, you know, it's not for everyone else, it's just for us to get it right. And then once we're happy with the dishes here, then that's when we'll spread it out to everyone. With the restaurant opening to the public tomorrow, the kitchen team will have to work late into the night again. But no one seems to be complaining as the excitement starts to build around the new menu. A lot of Sarah's menu is made up of dishes the Indian staff have never heard of. So they're not just learning new recipes, they're discovering a whole new cuisine. So we're only about 10% into the entire menu because we actually have six menus in total between the beach club, the private dining room, the events menu, the restaurant menu, the breakfast menu, <laughs> dessert menu, so there's a lot to do. So this is honestly just scraping the edges of what we have to achieve, but we'll get there. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Excitement builds as the front of house staff line up to sample the new menu. So these are fish tacos, so it's Szechuan spiced fish with uh, going sausage uh, coleslaw mayonnaise. First reactions by the staff are mixed, with some claiming the food is bland and not spicy enough. Yeah. This is Sarah's first encounter with the struggles she is bound to face with the Indian palate. Although Sarah tries to laugh it off, what? her confidence is clearly shaken. What do you think? Huh? Bland? What did you say? Oh, really? Oh, honestly, I'm actually starting to feel a bit sick because it's a lot to take on and there's a lot to do and I know all of the information's in there somewhere but at the moment I feel pretty overwhelmed and it was a very emotional day today. All of the time through this whole process there's always these moments where I just think oh my god what have I done what am I doing. I know in my head it's like come on I cook these dishes at home and it's fine but at the moment it just feels like how am I gonna pull this off. <laughs> I need to dig deep and focus and make this happen. After what's already been an emotional day, Sarah heads home to spend a few final hours with her son Phoenix before he heads to the airport to fly home. For now, Phoenix heads back to Australia with his dad. For an emotional Sarah, Goa will be home for the next four months and it will be another long wait until Phoenix is back to visit.
Phoenix is such a little shining light and, yeah, oh my God. <laughs> it is a very critical time in the restaurant at the moment and I think hopefully it'll give me a little push just to know that I need to work my butt off now that he's not here and make it worth it and make it, you know, really successful. Because being away from him is very hard. Very hard. Yeah. It's still going to be hard. I'm going to miss him a lot. You know, every day he's growing and learning and he's just such a smart little boy and I'm so proud of him and, yeah. <laughs> it's time now to get really serious and make it all worth it. Next time on My Restaurant in India, tensions rise as the restaurant owners put pressure on the staff to open. We know it's not that comfortable because the timing is really crunched, but we just got to do it because we'll miss the book. Yeah, I was definitely close to saying, let's go home. Been at that point now probably twice where I've cracked the sh and, and broken. Antares receives its very first customers and the cracks start to appear. It's early in the night and we're still pretty precarious. It's the opposite to anything we're used to. It's really hard.